In this video, I'm going to talk about the optimal settings for your fraud tools to help um, prevent uh, people from trying different cards on your online order page. So uh, here's what you should do. Um, go to Accounts and Setup right here at the very bottom left. But first, you want to make sure you're at the right location. So make sure to choose the correct location. If you have multiple locations, uh, do the same settings for all locations. Unless one location is a little bit different and you want to do something different. And you may, you may want to um, add more filters to that location. So let's go ahead, just uh, start with this one here. I'm going to go to Fraud Tools right here at the bottom left. By the time you watch this video, it may be somewhere else, but just look for the word Fraud Tools, okay? And again, Fraud Tools is for card not present transactions. In other words, these are cards that are manually entered on your online order page or website for e commerce or online order page or online order transactions. So the first thing you want to go to is um, transaction limits. You can also do these things too, which is actually a great idea too. Um, so for example, you can go here and you can say that you, you need the street address um, uh, before you can accept their credit card. If it does not match, it'll decline it. Okay. So if you want to do this one, you can, but just know that uh, if somehow they type in the address incorrectly, they may get declined. So that's up to you if you want to enable this. But if you are getting a lot of fraudulent orders, um, then you want to go ahead and come here and enable this setting right here. Street address does not match when provided. And the same thing with postal code uh, does not match when provided. So if you do these things, then it will decline the card if it does not match. Okay. So I'm going to just do postal code because uh, typically with the uh, online orders, um, you know, people usually just put in their card and zip code. But if you have problems, then enable this one too, okay? And the, here's the other important one. Um, so you want to go here and do transaction limits, okay? So uh, let me start from the beginning. I'm going to delete this one here, remove the rule. So the first one you want to do is um, cl click on add rule. And when you click on add rule, you'll see a lot of different rules here. Um, there's there's single transaction, number of transactions, identical transactions. Uh, there's a lot of different options here. So uh, again, you can go through here and do what you wish to do. Um, but the ones I'm going to recommend you is what I think is best um, to help prevent fraud from occurring on your order online page. So what you want to do is uh, go under here and then go to a number of transactions is greater than which is, uh, let's see here. Let me go to the top. Uh, right here, this one right here. And then just put 100 here. Um, and then do one hour. So this way, because uh, basically what you're indicating is that if somebody's on your site just trying different cards until they get one right to make it work, um, people tend, bad actors will do that to um, finally find a card that works. Uh, and the, the pros of this is that if you're not doing 100 online orders per hour, then you can do this. But if you're doing a lot of online orders and they're all legit transactions, you haven't had any, any issues, then you may want to increase this to 500 or 200. But most uh, online ordering sites, uh, most people don't do 100 online orders per hour. Um, so you, you pretty much, um, you know, saying to the system that if you get more than 100 credit card transactions in one hour to decline it, okay? So we're going to do all transactions like that, okay? So again, this one is highly recommended, but you may skip this if you need to, but we recommend you do this one here, 100. If you feel like you're doing a lot of orders, then put 200 here, okay? But 100 is a good number to go with. All right, so this is the first one. And then second one you want to do is press add rule again. And on this one, what you want to do is you want to go number of identical transactions. This is a very important one. So make sure not to skip this step because typically when somebody tries um, a um, order on your website, they're usually uh, trying again and again and again with the same amount. So and in most cases, people tend to get it right after the second try or third try. If they can't get it right after the third try, there's something very skeptical going on. That means either they're trying all the all these different cards um, uh, and it's not working. So uh, this one, I would go between five or ten. Um, so I would say five because 
whenever I do an online order, usually I get it right by the second try in case I type in my card number wrong. Um, so if I try a transaction for $40, uh, the first time I may miss a digit or miss the CVC number or get something wrong. But typically after the, my second or third try, I usually get it right, okay? So if somebody can't get it right by the fifth time, there's something skeptical about that. Uh, something doesn't seem right. So I would put here five or 10, okay? So in, in this case, I'm gonna be a little more conservative and put 10, okay? But, um, but again, uh, kind of gauge the interest in your area. Uh, so go between five or 10. You can even go as low as three if you wish, okay? And then do per, uh, I would say per five minutes, okay? Because in five minutes, because uh, here's, here's why. Let's say I have a credit card and I try, it doesn't work. And then I try to get it doesn't work. And then I go and then I go to to my other room in the house to get a different credit card. You know, you know, it, it can take about a couple minutes to walk over there, find it, try it again, and it doesn't work. Uh, and then I may want to go to maybe uh, ask um, a spouse for their uh, to help with the card transaction. Uh, ask them if they can put their card number in there. So that can take about five minutes. So you know, leave about five minutes here for them to try identical transactions. Limit is ten. Again. Uh, this is what I recommend, but again, you can you can adjust as needed. And then, and then finally, the other more imp uh, other very important one is IP address, because um, believe it or not, some of the fraud occurs with people not even in, in your area. I mean, most of the businesses, you know, they typically do local delivery, local restaurants, um, and some of you may be doing shipping here and there. Um, but what if you're getting an order that you never got before, which is from a different country or a different location or something that doesn't seem right? So this one, you also want to limit that because bad actors may be behind an IP address and they may be, um, you know, going about and trying all these different credit cards to make sure to finally find one that goes through. So let's go ahead and limit this one too. Number uh, set out rule, uh, let's say two. Uh, let's say let's just say five actually five and then do um, and then do uh, our one okay so basically what is saying that if a somebody's IP address they have five uh, tries to make the transaction work within one hour okay and this is in line with the other one um, is very close to that one so this is going to be a good setting for you right here. Number of transactions per IP is greater than five. Uh, it blocks it in every hour, right? If you feel like this is too low, you know, let's go ahead and do 10, okay? So they have uh, 10 attempts per IP address to try it, okay? Between five and 10, um, and then you can kind of gauge that. All right, again, um, this is, uh, I would say it's uh, highly, I would say it's a good idea to do this because you never know when this can happen to you. Uh, there's bad actors out there. And by taking preventative measure, you'll be able to uh, prevent fraud and people trying to um, do these uh, actions which may lead to chargebacks or other factors and create some uh, inconvenience for your business, okay? And from time to time, please come back here and visit this page because uh, they may have new features here. They may have new uh, options here. Uh, and that way you can always uh, do that. So once you do that, make sure to press save changes right here. Okay, right here. And then, um, oh, this one is says when provided. So let's see here. So actually this is fine. Postal, uh, postal uh, code not verified. So if they don't provide it, it'll go through um, when provided. So let's do this one too. Remember, after you do this, uh, uh, it's, I would recommend to also go on your order online page, do an order, just make sure everything's working correctly because you don't want to be too strict or else you're going to prevent a lot of orders from going through and you don't want to make it too easy, which allows a lot of bad actors to go through. So kind of keep a middle balance when you do, these, when you do set these rules. And then once you're done, um, again, it says it takes about an hour to take effect, okay? Um, this is gonna, so just kind of be patient with that. So about one hour later, just do a test transaction or maybe your customers are ordering and if you get some calls saying that their cards are getting declined, then you may wanna come back here and kind of ease it up a little bit. But, um, but if you don't, but everything is uh, functioning normally, 
then you can just leave it the way it is, all right? Again, come back here from time to time to see the new rules to make sure everything is, is working. And also be careful uh, not to do additional settings beyond what I mentioned in the video. You can, but you may make it too strict, um, and then sometimes the cards may not even go through, okay? Um, okay, so here you are. Just make sure to uh, um, apply these if you can, uh, or actually you should, and um, hopefully this will help you with any fraud or unauthorized charges. Thank you so much. Have a great day.